half the amount of grains that you consume should be whole grains. Can anyone tell me what it means to be a whole grain? Okay, I'll just repeat that. So, for every 100 calories that something com uh, contains, it should have two grams of fiber, and then the first ingredient should be whole grains. But the first word should be whole. You should have three ounces of whole grains every single day. You should eat two cups of fruit and two and a half cups of vegetables every single day. You should have two cups of fruit and two and a half cups of vegetables every single day. Go easy on fruit juice. And my plate suggests that you eat 12 to 15 teaspoons of added sugar. Which is the equivalent of 50 to 60 grams of added sugar. my plate at least. I think there was another type of recommendation. That, yeah, so the American Heart Association recommends 6.5 teaspoons of sugar and then for women and then 9.5 for men. So in the beginning portion, you said about carbohydrates and then half, you said half of, you said a half of grains should be whole grains, right? Okay. Thank you. Here are the learning objectives. I'm going to go through them. Okay, please answer these. very important chapter so now all of these when I did this exam I just made flashcards of these so if you know them then you should be fine okay Carbohydrates. So carbohydrates primary function is energy and that's because glucose is our So this is because glucose is our primary energy source. It's good for making red blood cells and for the brain. Um, so the last question was about this. We should know that carbohydrates are our primary source of energy during intense exercise. Red blood cells. It's good for making red blood cells and good for the brain. I'm not sure if any of you have looked at an fMRI, but basically what it shows is where glucose activity is happening in your brain, so that's where you can tell uh, what part of your brain that you're using. So I guess we need it. Okay, 
Yes. Sixteen. That's correct. And that's because 15 grams of carbohydrate are, okay, so one gram of carbohydrates is equal to four calories. So you just multiply them. Okay, very important to know the types of car carbohydrates. So there are simple sugars, which are also called refined sugars. They're very easy to digest, and they have very little nutrient content. They're very easy to digest. So when there's a glucose plus a glucose that makes maltose, which is in malt liquor, Glucose plus fructose makes sucrose. makes sucrose, and that is table sugar. And then glucose plus galactose makes lactose, which is milk sugar. Yes. Glucose plus galactose makes lactose. And then complex carbohydrates are chains of glucose poly polysaccharides. And these are what you should eat for intense exercise. You should also know that a high carbohydrate diet will increase performance and endurance athletes because it replenishes glycogen stores. And that's <laughs> it replenishes your glycogen stores. tell me in order from the greatest fiber content to the lowest fiber content all of these foods. Yeah? We go black beans, broccoli, bananas, right? That is correct. Um, so beans typically, you don't have to know this exact amount, but beans um, actually, okay, I'll just tell you the order. Yeah, so it's <coughs> black beans, fruit, veggies, and then breads, in terms of their fiber content. So fruit has two and a half to eight grams per cup, and then veggies have a half a gram to six grams per cup, so it really depends which one you're talking about. I don't think she's gonna have both a fruit and a vegetable, but definitely just know this, this particular order. I think it would be a fairly straightforward question if she were to put this on there. So you should know the differences between soluble and insoluble fiber. So soluble fiber is dissolvable. Is that a word? 
dissolves in water, and then insoluble fiber does not dissolve in water. So insoluble fiber will increase your stool bulk, um, and then soluble fiber will speed up the process of digestion. <coughs> I'm also going to list the health implications of fiber because you guys need to know that. So it lowers your risk for type 2 diabetes. It lowers your serum cholesterol, which is composed of your HDL and LDL levels. So if it lowers your serum cholesterol, then it lowers your risk of cardiovascular disease. And it does this because it binds to bile. Um, so bile isn't recycled, but you don't know how you don't have to know how bile is recycled in the body. And then um, another important point is that it decreases your risk for diverticulosis. <coughs> I think that's how you pronounce it. I'm not positive, but you'll recognize it on the exam. And then you should also know the adequate intake. So dietary fiber decreases the TB. Sorry. So dietary fiber decreases the chance of getting TB. DB. TB. The one said. And how do you pronounce it? Type two diabetes. Type two diabetes. Yes. to move on. Okay, so this is an eye clicker question. So perhaps you'll have to know it. Can someone answer this for me? Yes. That's correct. So that's the three things that I just listed. That's cardiovascular disease, sorry. Okay, you should definitely know how carbohydrates are digested, so I'm going to explain that. So they are broken into dissect. They're broken into disaccharides um, in the mouth by salivary amylase. And then from there, they are broken down into monosaccharides in the stomach. Then they are absorbed into the small intestine. And then this point right here is where, uh, what I was talking about with lacteal, that's where they're absorbed into the microvilli and lacteals of the small intestine, which is the brush border membrane. So then they will be taken immediately to the liver uh, by the bloodstream to be processed. And then glucose will either flow in our bloodstream and affect our blood sugar, or it will be stored <coughs> as fat or glycogen. So usually if it's a much bigger, much harder uh, molecule to break down, it'll go through the lacteals because it's much larger um, passageway. If it's easy enough, small enough, simple enough to go directly into the bloodstream and diffuse through like capillary walls, that's your idea. So would carbohydrates go directly into the capillaries or it depends on... It would, well, so a carbohydrate would be broken down all the way to glucose. Glucose is a monosaccharide. 
glucose would go into the bloodstream. If you ever hear the terms high blood glucose, low blood glucose, because there's sugar in your blood. Okay, you should definitely know this. I think I just uh, stated this before, but a high carbohydrate diet will increase your performance, and this is because it replenishes glycogen stores. And then you should know that as the intensity of your exercise increases, you need more uh, glucose or you know, carbohydrates to perform that exercise. Okay, so this is the definition of a whole grain. So for every 100 calories, there are two grams of fiber listed as dietary fiber on a nutrition label. And then the first ingredient is whole grain. The first word of the ingredients is whole. Remember in discussion, we did an activity where you looked at the two uh, granola bars and had to evaluate if it was a source of whole grains or not. When I took this class, there was a very, very similar question where she gave a nutrition label. I believe it was a true-false question that said this item is a source of uh, whole grain or something like that. So the activities we do in discussion, strong recommendation to look at those types of things. We do them for a reason, and that will really help us. Same with the uh, chart that shows the different types of fat and whether they increase or decrease inflammation, LDL, and HDL. I would know those types of things. Oh, okay. We'll go over that. Yeah. So if it's not whole grain on the ingredients list, it will say enriched wheat or enriched white bread, and that's just the endosperm. Okay, moving on. Okay. Um, so, <coughs> high fructose corn syrup is 50 to 80% fructose in comparison with other types of sugar, which are roughly 50% fructose. Um, and you should know that it's metabolized differently, as well as the health implications for it. Yes? Uh, could you please go to the previous slide? It's just a question that I was going to... Oh, really? Oh. That's just, that's just safe and sorry. That stands for trig triglycerides. Thank you. Um, so when it increases blood lipids or blood triglycerides, um, this is actually something that leads to atherosclerosis. Yeah. So um, that atherosclerosis is something that leads to cardiovascular disease. So. This is basically saying that high fructose corn, corn syrup isn't good for you. And that's what's in candies and syrups and whatnot, so you just need to watch out for how much you eat of it, but it doesn't mean that it's not good for you. So I'm going to correct myself there. Yeah. Anything in moderation essentially isn't terrible for you. There are no bad foods in nutrition. Okay. 
health, health implications. Uh, okay, so as we were just saying, um, you shouldn't have too much of anything. So when you are having too much sugar, you can increase um, your triglycerides in your liver and get a fatty liver, that's what they call it. Um, and uh, alcohol does that as well. Um, you can in increase uh, TG levels in the blood and then not enough carbohydrates is also not great for you. Um, but fiber is shown to help with this. So high fiber diet is good for blood sugar levels. I think also Claire mentioned in class that fruit contains fructose, but it's, um, what was she saying about it? If you eat that in moderate amounts, it's not bad for you, even though it does have sugar. Sugar in moderate amounts is okay for you. Should know anything it's the learning objectives start slide two yeah they're start for a reason she's very she's very fair about that it's because they answer the learning objectives right okay so these are the recommended um, sugar intakes for men and women and i think i just mentioned this a minute just to write out a table comparing type 1 diabetes with type 2 diabetes uh, based on all of these factors because that's something that you should know.
怎么进门店？门店吗？你不用。